Hey guys, Pastor Mike here with a couple more questions uh, to end up the week. These came in last weekend during the Sexpectations series. Uh, someone asked, do you think societal acceptance of sex before marriage is the result of people waiting longer to get married than in the past because of career goals, those kind of things? Um, I think we use any uh, reason we can get our hands on uh, to justify doing what we want to do instead of what God wants us to do. Uh, this is the original sin. It gets played out in every area of our lives, including our sexual lives. Uh, the original sin of God putting Adam and Eve in a paradise where everything was at their disposal for their pleasure. God said, I'm gonna draw a boundary around one tree, can't eat the fruit of that tree. And what did temptation offer? Eat that, eat that fruit. That fruit's gonna make you like God. Isn't being like God a good thing? See, we want to play God. We want to accept God's boundaries for everyone else. We see the good in God's boundaries that apply for everyone else. But in our particular situation, here's why I know best for me. See, we want to play God. Uh, we don't want to accept the limits and boundaries that God has for us. So we come up with ways to rationalize. Uh, we do this uh, with every area of marriage by saying, hey, we want to live together uh, before we get married. We want to test our compatibility to make sure that we can communicate, that we can handle conflict, that, that we do life in the same way. We want to test our sexual compatibility. Why would you buy a car without test driving it, right? Hey, listen, we're fooling ourselves to think that marriage is all about compatibility. It's about commitment a desire to put the other person first. It's a desire to honor God and honor our spouse, to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. It's about a commitment to be the right person. Now look, this is how Zig Ziglar said it. Uh, marriage is much more than finding the right person. It's a matter of being the right person. See, marriage is about submitting to one another to serve them. It's about commitment rather than compatibility. Let's go on to the last question here. How can intimacy uh, be regained after infidelity? Um, hey, let me, just, let me just say, first of all, if you're the, uh, on the uh, victim of a spouse who has stepped outside of marriage, uh, that, is a, that is one of the deepest hurts that a human being can go through. That in marriage, uh, God says that two become one. And so that kind of, of betrayal, that kind of breach of trust uh, is at the core of who we are and, and God's heart goes out to you. And, and yet God will say this, that anything is possible, that, that God is steadfast in his commitment to you and your marriage. And if you are willing to each work together on this, then all things are possible. It's a both and. It's gonna require the person who stepped outside of marriage to demonstrate true repentance, not just confession and saying, hey, I'm sorry. It's about the desire to say, I'm willing to do the work over time to rebuild trust because I betrayed a trust at the deepest level. To not think that I can just say I'm sorry 10 times and we need to move on, we need to let that go, and doesn't happen that way. Um, on, the, on the person who has been betrayed, it's gonna require a commitment to actually forgive, uh, which is impossible outside of God. Just as God has forgiven us, we're called to forgive others. Uh, we don't offer forgiveness willy-nilly, but when that person who's broken the trust, when the spouse demonstrates true humility, is earnest in their heart, the sadness about uh, having stepped outside of the marriage and, and a desire to rebuild that marriage, all things are possible with God. You've got to be willing to truly forgive uh, in a way that is willing to let go of. You're not gonna forget about it, but you have to choose that I'm not gonna bring that back. The next time that I get mad, the next time that my spouse does something, I'm not gonna reach back to the past and pull that out as a weapon to inflict pain and punishment on the other person. Hey, all things with God, all things are possible. And just like when a broken arm, when we get a broken arm, uh, when that broken arm is, is healed properly, it's set by a doctor, it's put in a cast and it heals, that place where it was broken actually becomes stronger than before 
it was broken. So all things can be possible if we do them in God's way. I hope that helps, and uh, I wish you all God's blessings. I can't wait to see you in worship this weekend.